Hello. In my last video message, I gave a bit of a primer regarding our strategic plan. Today, I'd like to spend more time with you, sharing the details of what we are calling our framework for the future. It is an ambitious plan and one that myself and your executive team believe that with your hard work, commitment, and dedication will help drive the agency forward. We recognize that the Bureau's strength comes from you, our employees. You are the foundation of this agency. So you were top of mind as we created this framework, which consists of seven goals, which will support our mission and vision. So I wanna talk about them for a minute. First and foremost, you. Our goal is to focus on you and recruit, train, retain, and ensure the well-being of our competent and diverse workforce who are ready to meet the current and future needs of the Bureau. And we know you are exhausted and riveted with overtime and augmentation. So we, along with the Department of Justice, will be laser focused on improving this situation this year. And we are using all tools at our disposal to address our staffing crisis. Recruitment events are up. Correctional officer applications are up. We've increased correctional officer salary by $2,000. We're trying to meet market salaries for health services. Recruitment, relocation, and retention incentives are in place across this nation. We've raised the maximum entry age from 37 to 39 for our law enforcement hires. We also recognize that our buildings are in disrepair and that this has been a problem in the making for decades. We are currently undergoing a review from an outside contractor to assess our overall problem in order to appropriately ask for funding for our maintenance and repair backlog. In the meantime, we will leverage the resources we have to maintain, repair, and modernize infrastructure and advance technology. In the past 10 years, we have received an average of about $100 million a year for our estimated $3 billion backlog in maintenance and repairs. This year, we received a substantial increase in the amount, and it was in the amount of $180 million. So we will be working diligently on roofs, cameras, and perimeter fencing, and emergency repairs will continue. Overall items like emergency response buttons, collapsing stairwells, and damage due to storms. We will also focus on restrictive housing. We know that the use of restrictive housing can have detrimental effects on the physical and mental health of those in our care and custody. It is not an effective deterrent and can actually increase in an individual's future criminality. So we are going to work to optimize the use of restrictive housing so that we can safely and appropriately care for those in our custody while reducing the use of restrictive housing. So we have our own internal work group recommendations that are forthcoming, as well as an assessment from an external body through the National Institute of Justice. And we look forward to sharing those recommendations with you in good time. Some of the short-term recommendations include instilling healthy interactions into all relevant trainings, discontinuing the use of punishing those who engage in self-harm, exploring a maximum limit on restrictive housing stays, creating more normalized environments generally, and exploring specialty posts such as reentry or mental health officers. We're also going to increase transparency in restrictive housing through data sharing internally and externally. We also know that to improve your working conditions and better prepare individuals for reentry, we need to develop more normalized environments inside our institutions that better mirror our community. At our last executive team, we had a presentation where we reviewed other correctional systems who have done this safely and effectively and discussed implementing these ideas in select facilities. Focusing on health services is in our fifth category. We know that our health services employees are understaffed. So in addition to advancing our recruitment and retention in health services, we are currently undergoing a massive review of our healthcare system to ensure that we are providing high quality, cost-effective, and innovative healthcare systems. 
We need to improve our reliance on data and research to drive our decision making, which will improve operations, policies, procedures across all disciplines. And finally, we will continue to improve and leverage our relationships with public and private stakeholders, as well as justice involved individuals to help better inform our policies and practices. This strategic framework supports the overall Department of Justice strategic plan and serves as our blueprint for pursuing and achieving our goals. But building the framework is not nearly enough. We need action. So the executive team, regional offices, and divisions and headquarters have begun to advance these seven goals. But we cannot do it alone. We need your help. We need your ideas. And of course, we want your enthusiasm. We are at an exciting moment in our history. We have the opportunity to make a lasting impact on the lives of the people we serve, the communities we protect, and the nation we love. Again, you are our everything. Thank you for all that you do. Together, I look forward to seeing this plan drive us forward.